Hi, and welcome to 3dmotive.com. My name is Stephen G. Wells. I am a senior character artist. In this tips and tricks tutorial, we'll take a look at the ZBrush interface. Take a look at uh, docking and all the things we can do with it. This is the particular dog that comes built into ZBrush. You can easily load it up. I'm rotating the dog right now by using my left mouse, clicking and dragging in the background. I can just rotate it around. If I control, if I left click Alt, I can pan around. And if I right click Alt and then let go of the Alt, I can zoom in and zoom out. All right. As you can see, the, uh, the model has particular polygons, but you can't see a wireframe. That's because by default, wireframe is hidden. Shift F will turn your wireframe on on your particular keyboard. So there you go. You can see the, how the, the polygons look for uh, the particular model. Okay. Uh, for this viewport, you can actually make this viewport bigger by clicking on this arrow key right here. It actually will give you more uh, real estate for viewing so you can see everything bigger. Uh, this side you can actually have your material palette over here. You can actually dock other palettes and I'll should be showing you that in just a second. So again, just arrow key up and down. This is uh, the default that will come up will be this the tool palette. Now right here is our docking or undocking. If you click on it, it disappears. It's not like it's actually gone. It's right up here. Any of these particular um, areas have this little icon right here. If you click on that, that'll dock it to an open area on your particular uh, panel. If you have some space over here, you can grab, say, movie and dock it. Or I just grab material. Let's do movie. And now we have material and movie on the left hand side. And to scroll up and down, as you can see, I get the arrow key. It's just left click, drag, and hold. If I don't want the material, I just click this one right here. And now I have just movie. If I don't want that, I can click it and close it. You can go ahead and then scale it back out. Over on this side, again, preferences, I can close that. I can go to tool, click it, and there we go. Okay. So, so grabbing any of these, like I said, any of these that have the icon, they'll go to, usually your default, it'll go to whatever side is open, and you can just add it in. You can actually stack these two, by the way. So you can see, I've now got three different palettes working. Okay, I have Tool, Picker, Preferences. Of course, I can now just close them up by that. Put, they've actually moved back up in this area and we're now just left with our default tool. Now if you look in the tool palette each one of these has a sub palette or a subcategory like our sub tool. If I go to the sub tool palette the dog, this particular mesh, is on a layer on a sub tool layer. Now that's not the same thing as a layer in Photoshop this is a sub tool layer. If this had say, I don't know, a saddle on it and then there was a little uh, dwarf, a fantasy dwarf on it, they'd be on separate layers and they would be listed as well and you'd see how they would be listed. You can rename this particular uh, subtool. You can call it, say, Dog Mesh and hit Enter and it's now Dog Mesh. So it's very easy to rename things. I could delete this by hitting the delete. Okay. Uh, these sort of uh, remesh and projection and such are not something that we're going to get into. We're just uh, It's something that we can discuss at a later point. Uh, this is to show you some of the different things. You can actually duplicate this just by clicking the duplicate key. I now have two different meshes. This eyeball is what means the one that is on or off. So if I, I'm on this particular subtool, in fact, let's hit Shift F. If I go ahead and do, it, by the way, to change any of these for strokes or whatnot, you just click on it, left click, and you can do a freehand. Let's just go ahead and add in something. I'm just going to create this one there. Okay. Now that's obviously on this one particular subtool. If I use my arrow key on my keyboard to navigate to the one below it, 
I can now see the original mesh with the new mesh. All I need to do is turn off that eyeball and now that means when I go to each or other subtool only the one I'm on will show up. Okay. So there you go. I'm just arrow keying it. That way you can know if you're duplicating a particular mesh and you're working on a mesh, if you're ever sh not sure you know, which mesh you're working on, just use your arrow key down and make sure that both of these are off. And that way, whatever particular subtool you're on will be the only one that will end up showing up on screen. This is a particular brush palette. If you left click, you get all the different brushes that you have. Okay. Uh, this is obviously a quick introduction to all of this. So we're not going to go into detail on it, but you can scroll through and see the different brushes that you might want to select. You can grab the dab st dam standard brush. It comes with some settings for the alphas and how it's going to look on your particular model when you work with it. You can also, if you know your, your particular brush is ha starts with say a D or a C or whatever, you can actually hit that on the keyboard. If you, you click and it's left click and you, you have your brush palette, you can now hit C and it shows up all your brushes that are C. If I hit D, it shows only the ones that are D. So it's basically alphabetical. You can also click it via uh, just the keyboards. So one way or the other you can get you, you brush up as you need to. Okay. The alphas, this is or the strokes, this is whether your model is going to be a smooth stroke, track rectangle, etc., 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 there's a bunch of different things you can play with. Again, for any one of these, you just left click; it'll automatically give you a dialog box of you know what you want to do with it. Alphas are the same way. Textures are the same way. For the matte caps, they're also the same way. I can left just click on it, and it comes up all these different matte caps. And the, as you can see, as I uh, drag over each one of these particular mat caps it actually changes what my dog looks like you can see what the material looks like on the dog itself okay if let's say I like this particular one all I have to do is just click on it and now I've changed the material or I can go back to the red wax it's right back there this is the color picker this is where right now technically although it looks like you know it's a red wax it's technically a white color on it if I change the color by just left clicking and dragging you can see that changes it. it's now really a red base with a red wax on it if I change it to say green I can click in I, I can click either in here or here to change colors and you can see it changes that based on whatever color I'm working with okay you can switch colors right here that's the black, that's the white. Okay. There are shortcuts to this and, and you'll get those as you come. Anytime you have a particular shortcut, if you just put your mouse over, it'll show you switch colors V. So if I'm in the back background, I can hit V and switch it out all I want. I'm just hitting V. Okay. If you don't like this gradient on this background, you can go up to document and you can change the range. This is the range that creates how strong or how soft that gradient is. If you turn the gradient down to zero, it's now just a flat gray background. Okay. You can also change the color of your background. Let's say we'll change to a kind of a grayish blue. If I go to document, I can now change my background to that particular color very simply. All right, on the subtool palette, if I to open and close the uh, each one of these palettes, you just click on the name this this particular bar. If I click on layers, it gives me layers. If I click on geometry, it brings me geometry and there's a bunch of uh, parameters on that. Any one of these at any point, you can just click in, on it and read what's, you know, what needs to be done with it and you can click on it again and close it up. Okay? It's very simple, very easy. ZBrush looks a little confusing. Uh, I know a number of students initially are, are put off by the interface, but it's actually pretty easy once you understand what you can or can't do with it. But it, it's it's simple. Uh, you can do a bunch of different tools. Up here, you have a lot of your editing tools. Like uh, in order to be able to do anything on this particular model, you have to make sure you're in your edit mode. 
And again, if I hold my mouse over it, you can see that it, it says edit object T. So if I hit T, I'm out of edit. I can't actually do anything. And I'm actually just redrawing it on the screen. Now I've seen a bunch of students do this too, where they accidentally re redraw it on the screen. And oh my gosh, what, what, how, do I, how do I get back into it? Well, first off, you can get back into edit just by hitting T, but you're only going to be editing the last dog you drew. As you can see, it's to the, the right. The easiest thing to do is just hit Control N, which is new. It's the same control in pretty much every program. Control N is always new. I can redraw the dog back on screen and then hit T and I'm back in edit. So I only have the one dog that I need to work with. Okay. For the Z intensity, this is how strong this particular brush might uh, be uh, affecting the mesh. The Z intensity, if I turn it down, you can see it doesn't do a whole lot, whereas if I turn it up, it starts to affect it more, and if I turn it up to 100%, it really affects it. And again, this is a low poly. To subdivide this, we just hit Control D. We can subdivide again, Control D. If you want to see how many polygons you're dealing with at this point, you can always look up here. You can just hit this arrow key, and you can see the active points is 127,000 polys. The total points is 135,000 because we do have, if we go to our subtool, remember we do have a second subtool. Let's navigate to that. To get rid of a particular uh, subtool, we just hit delete and hit always OK. Now, if I go back, we're at 127,000 and it's the only thing we have in our subtool palette. So that's what we're getting for the total points, or in other words, total vertices. So now if we turn around and change our Z intensity down a little bit, you can actually see where it doesn't just doesn't do it a whole lot. Scale it up and it does it more and here it does it even more, okay? Just very quick, very easy. You can change uh that's the Z add if you do Z subtract instead of uh carving uh, carving out, you're actually going to be carving in. See, there you go. Or you can turn Z add on, and you can, the shortcut key to Z subtract without getting out of Z add is hold down your Alt key. If I hold my Alt key, I can do that. I let go of my Alt, and I'm back into Z add. Alt is to etch in, Z add, I just let go. All right. Very simple, very easy. It looks complicated, but it's really not. It's actually pretty, pretty simple. Anyway, I hope this has been a fun little learning experience. My name is Stephen G. Wells, and this has been 3dmotive.com.